Y'all better not make me get up off this couch. All right, let's do this. Hello, everybody. My name is Brianna, and welcome back to Carefree Bree. So glad you could join me. Please be sure to follow me on Twitter, on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. I'll link that in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my blog. That's where this all started, carefreebreeblog.com. Every Sunday, I post a new blog post, and this past week, I posted one called Single But Taken. So check it out. I also do L's and W's every Wednesday, uh, so go check that out. There will not be one for this week because I forgot, plain and simple. <laughs> Y'all be going through it, okay? Leave me alone. And last but certainly not least, please donate to my Patreon and or PayPal accounts. They are here to help fund my brand and especially for Patreon. I'm able to help get ideas from you guys, do some really nice getaways. I hope to, you know, have merch in there someday soon. I'm going to operate differently this week. Uh, I'm just going to be frank with y'all. A lot of y'all pissed me off, so I'm starting a new segment on this here YouTube channel called Rants and Reads. And today is my first rant and read because so much is going on and I just need to get it off my chest. I'll be back to my regularly scheduled program next week uh, with L's and W's. I'm just gonna be freeforming this thing because it just needs to go ahead and come organically. So let's get into it. But first, you already know, look at that steam. Ooh. That's the part I don't like. <laughs> it's chamomile because obviously I need something to calm my nerves. Like I said, a lot of y'all are already on them. Okay, I'm gonna go over two reads, which is for two groups of people and I'm gonna go over one rant which is about one big thing that's been all over the place and I'm tired let's start with the reads first up in the hot seat we have straight people straight people I am sick of all of you from a fellow straight to another can you please cut it out okay you know exactly what I'm talking about sure I trust that the majority of you are you know like-minded in that you accept people of all different sexual orientations and identities. I'm assuming and shooting a lot of you bail to say that you don't tolerate homophobia. I can shoot y'all some bail on that. What I know for a fact though, is that a lot of y'all are doing this for play play, okay? <laughs> You're playing around. You're saying that you don't care that someone's gay, but the second that anyone opens their mouth to state that they are gay, that they identify as something other than straight or cis hetero. All of a sudden, everyone gets super weird about it. Oh my God, why did you have to say that? Oh, it doesn't matter, it's not important, who cares? Obviously you do, motherfucking like, of course. You're getting so worked up about it to the point where you complain when gay people are on TV, or complain that everything's being shoved down your throat, when in reality, straightness is literally shoved down everyone's throat before they even pop out the womb. I think I'm just tired of the fakeness. It's so some really slick stuff that goes on that really annoys the crap out of me. I've said this before on this channel, one of my hugest pet peeves, one of the things that really irks me is disrespect in any form. In any of the phobias or the isms are some of the hugest forms of disrespect that you could possibly exhibit and it's so gross and disgusting. Racism, sexism, any of the phobias, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, I don't like it. I can't, I can't. It's been a long week of just watching people be ignorant online and in my face, and this is what this is for, okay? To just have moments. I need y'all to come to terms with the fact that while you may not be a homophobic person, you indeed are exhibiting homophobia, okay? The same way that a lady could walk up and touch my hair and say that it feels like sheep's wool and I tell her ma'am that's racist and she says but I have black friends though these things are not mutually exclusive you can have black friends and still do something racist to me it does not mean that you are a racist it means that you did something racist if you truly are not a racist you will figure out what you did correct it and try and do better next time same way for being homophobic just because you don't carry that hurt around in your heart does not mean that you are not hurting people every single day without you even knowing it. Do you not owe me an apology if you accidentally step on my toes? Yes, it was an accident, but guess what? It still hurts. And it doesn't matter that you didn't intend to hurt me. You still hurt me and you owe me an apology. Don't you dare get on this internet talking about some, I just don't see why people have to talk about it. I just don't see why you can't keep being gay to yourself. I just don't see, yes, you do see. That's the problem, you don't want to see. Every single person deserves to see themselves reflected within media, within society. We deserve that. 
I don't know, we're gonna move on. Just know that I'm really mad at you because the internet exists and the only reason why you're still this ignorant is because you refuse to literally take two seconds to Google all of this. You're a human being, I get it, we all make mistakes. No one is expecting anyone to be perfect. That's unfair to everybody. And it is also unfair to not try and be better for the sake of everyone you come in contact with. I do not have time to be dealing with y'all. And speaking of racism and speaking of entitlement and privilege, hello white women, how are you doing this evening? I hope you're doing well, let's chat. So background, I grew up in Bloomington, Illinois. It's in central Illinois. It is where Illinois State University is. There was not another black family in my neighborhood for two blocks. I lived on the east side of town. I know white culture very well because I grew up in it. I was forced to. I mean, you just have to learn how to code switch and deal with folks. But something that is the same across the board, no matter if I live in Bloomington, Columbia, Missouri, Chicago, what's the same across the board is that certain groups act accordingly when it comes to privileges that they have in society, right? Specifically for white women, they are able to use the fact that they are suppressed as leverage and also able to use their privilege as white women to navigate through society. With that said, I'm sure that if you have not been under a rock, you saw the video of the white woman basically recording a black woman arguing with her because this white woman had the nerve to reach over this black lady's baby to get shampoo instead of saying excuse me or hey I have to get this can you please move the baby or I'm sorry instead of doing any of that she just decided to record and say well she should have XYZ blah blah so basically all this entitlement going on nobody plays about their kids but especially black women don't play about their kids okay like this lady was literally talking about I'm gonna call the cops on you XYZ just because this black woman was in her face just because she pushed to push the phone out of her hand and stuff like that and I know people are like well the she only reached over the baby or whatever it was just something small it's not that serious but it is though because white women what y'all don't understand and I've seen this happen a lot is that kind of like with homophobia you don't see things that you don't want to see right and that includes black people whether overtly or subconsciously when it comes to black people and white people a lot of times black folks are erased because they are not seen because people don't want to see us okay we are not the norm we're not the majority and so anything that isn't those things is automatically seen as kind of like a speck on this very big white canvas if you will so that includes denying black people their space as well especially when it comes to black women because not only are we women which are you know subjected to harshness by men we are also black which is you know obviously oppressed by the masses white men do this too but again because i interact with white women a lot more i am speaking with y'all because there's a certain way that white women tend to speak to black women when it comes to these types of situations. If you're not this type of white woman, then I'm not talking to you. If you're a little bit irked right now, then maybe check yourself and ask yourself why you're upset about this. Are you thinking maybe you might have done something like this before, intruded on somebody's space, thought it wasn't a big deal? Are you the type who feels threatened by a black woman raising her voice because you intruded the space of her black child and she's trying to show her daughter in front of everybody that you are not to allow people to enter your space without permission? If you feel bothered by it, then maybe instead of being upset, look inward. Ask yourself, have I done those things? Challenge yourself to watch the way you move. Literally, these are such small things that you would think would be home training, right? But apparently some folks don't get it, especially when it comes to the different racial divides that we have in this country. And I don't think it's a coincidence. I think what's happening is that people are choosing to not respect black people in the way they should be respected. You feel as though in order to respect somebody else, I have to carve out a piece of my space and time, my autonomy, so they can have that. When that's furthest from the truth, it costs you nothing to say sorry. It costs you nothing to not touch my hair. It costs you nothing to not make any comments about my skin. You guys think this is bizarre, but these are things that I encounter on literally a daily basis and I need it to stop. I do, so I'm talking to you white women. I just need y'all to be better. Collect as a whole when it comes to white feminism when it comes to first world problems when it comes to how you interact with people of color you hold a certain responsibility to acknowledge your privilege and to act accordingly and while you personally might have been doing that this week a lot of people haven't so a way that you personally white woman can help us out with that is to check these people okay okay now those were all of my reads last but not least we have a rant um, what my whistle? This is gonna be a doozy.
So again, if you haven't been under a rock this week, you've probably seen that clip of uh, Fantasia going around from her Breakfast Club interview where she was talking about submitting to the husband in the household, right? According to her, men should lead the household and how it's a generational divide. The internet was in an uproar talking about, I'm not submitting to no one, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. We gonna talk about all that. She basically came back with her husband and did a, you know, a personal video and he explained what submission was and she explained what it was according to them. So I kind of wanted to, you know, talk about this because I think this is important to talk about. So Fantasia is talking about submission specifically from a biblical standpoint, right? The Bible talks about women submitting to their husband. And so that's what people are up in arms about because historically um, religion, especially Christianity, has not been the best to women or to people in general and people who claim to be Christians haven't been the best people either, which is how you get a conclusion from the world that submission is this horrible thing. I wanna say I understand both sides of the coin. I understand what Fantasia is trying to say, though I do not agree with her delivery or wholeheartedly with everything she's talking about, but I get the basis of the argument. And I get why people wouldn't like this take, you know, especially everything going on with women in this world. Submission hasn't been portrayed as this fun thing to do, right? Usually it's you give everything over to the husband, you're seen as property in a way that is completely submissive, where no one else has a say in the household. I wanna make it clear that is not what she is talking about. But I do understand why people would think that way because of all these images that have been portrayed as submission. To be honest, y'all, I lie somewhere in the middle, though I used to think more so with the way people are reacting online, right? I'm not submitting to anybody. It should be a partnership. You know, you just wanna oppress women. It's all about patriarchy, keeping women down, blah, blah, blah. While I still agree with that, my stance is different now. I lie somewhere in the middle because this is spoken from a biblical standpoint. Look, I'm not trying to get preachy on y'all. I'm not gonna throw no Bible verses at y'all. Y'all can do your research on your own, but I am speaking from my perspective as a Christian woman who has learned about this over time. A single Christian woman, mind you. First, I used to think of submission as what others are saying, right? That it's just this horrible thing or whatever. But then when I studied the Bible, went back to church and you know just really delved into what submission is supposed to mean in a biblical standpoint, I changed the way I thought about this. Submission, in this case, isn't the dictionary definition of what submission is. So the dictionary definition of submission is the action or fact of accepting or yielding to superior force or to the will or authority of another person. And the example they gave was they were forced into submission. So like that's already this, you know, language around submission that classifies one party as superior and the other as inferior, right? But the kind of submission we are talking about is the biblical sense of submission. And in the Bible, this kind of submission is not described as one party being inferior to the other, except when discussing God versus man. This was only made clearer to me after I went back to church because again, I was looking at the dictionary definition. God made us, okay? He knows how powerful we are. <laughs> and it wasn't until I learned what God had to say about me as a woman that I was able to stop listening to what the world had to say about it. Yes, oppression is real. Yes, submission is a thing that actually happens, you know, in certain cultures or religions and households or, you know, dynamics. These things are real when it comes to abuse and control and stuff, but that is not the way God wants us to, you know, live as women. He does not want us to feel like we're less than. He wants us to be respected, loved, upheld, appreciated. Aside from that, ladies and gentlemen, I have an amazing grandfather who is 91 years old who was with his wife for 60 plus years. God rest my granny's soul. And every time I talk to him, whether on the phone or in person, we always talk about how a woman should be treated and loved. I made a thread on Twitter about this. I'm gonna read it aloud just so y'all can know what my grandpa says about this. I see a lot of people upset over Fantasia and her husband discussing submission. And I can't be mad because one, the world will turn anything good into a tool for patriarchy. And two, y'all don't have Will Otis Rick Sr. as my grandfather to sit and break it down for you. So here we go. Biblically, submission's about trust and partnership. When we submit to God, we're casting our thoughts and feelings into him. We do this giving not so he can control us, but so he can love us the way we need to be loved. It's trusting that he'll take our hearts and protect and embrace them. This is the kind of submission the Bible uses with marriage as well. Submitting to my husband, when I get a husband, isn't about following his every move, being controlled, etc. It's about entrusting him with my mind and heart as his partner, all caps all caps. My grandpa talks about this every time we speak. 
He's so old school yet so ahead of his time. He told me this, a wife is a helpmate. She's a mate, a partner, a friend. She is equal to the man. He is to protect and love her and she is to support and love him. Love is the foundation. Again, repeat, love is the foundation. Grandpa also expressed that what works for some may not work for others. The Bible doesn't say every household has to be the same. Do what works for y'all. Y'all were doing that anyway. My grandparents each led different things in the home, but they moved together as a unit and came to God together in prayer. Together. So heed the words of my grandfather. This is about love at its basis. You don't need to be submitting to no one who is not committed to you for a lifetime. I will be submitting to my husband because as my husband, as the man who I have entrusted with myself in my space, he deserves my heart, my mind, my feelings, my ideas, my brainstorms, my silliness, my quirkiness. He deserves all of that. And when I give that to him as a gift for showing me that he is worthy of submitting to, which is why the rock will be on this finger, okay? He will be able to love me in the way I need to be loved. And the great thing about that is because I'm his partner, he will also be submitting things to me too. I want him to submit his heart and his mind and his ideas so I know how best to love him. And then from there, once we've opened ourselves up to each other in that regard, we'll be able to take it from there however we see fit. Excuse me for one people to just have the kind of marriage they want, okay? But yeah, y'all, thanks for letting me come in here and read some of y'all today and also rant a little bit. If you take anything away from this, be mindful of how you treat other people. Check yourself every day to see if you're being the best person you can be. And for the love of God, mind your own business. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat this food. Y'all guess what's, guess what's in the fridge, just guess. Is some spaghetti in there? <laughs> so dumb. What is going on? I, I, I need to go to sleep, obviously, okay? <laughs> I'm gone. I'm sorry. I'm wishing all of you infinite freedom and perfect peace. This has been Carefree Bree. See you guys next week. I'm a mess. <laughs>